All right, open your Bibles tonight to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 21. I'm going to speak tonight on, the, on celebrating God's goodness. 1 Samuel, chapter 21, is kind of a funny story. David is being pursued and chased by Saul. And he flees into the country of the Philistines, and a man named Achish is there and <clears throat> things begin to be said about David and there are concerns expressed by Achish that he might be a problem. So he has nowhere to go with Saul. He thinks, you know, he, I mean he's in jeopardy now in the country of Philistia and I'm sure there are some of us that have been in spots that we didn't know what to do, and God gave him guidance on what to do. And uh, I think it's hilarious. I really do what, what God did. And Psalm 34, which we'll go to, and that's where I'm going to speak on, is him rejoicing and celebrating God's goodness for how he got him out of the jam in 1 Samuel 21. 1 Samuel 21, beginning in verse 10, says, And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David is tens of thousands? Now, isn't that interesting that other countries heard about this victory and all the exploits that David had done. And so verse 13 says, And he changed his behavior before them, and feigned himself mad in their hands, and scrabbled on the doors of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, ye see the man is mad, crazy. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of a madman, or of madmen, that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? And so David escapes for his life. In Psalm 34, he rejoices in God's deliverance in that jam that he was in. We all have an opportunity to rejoice in God's goodness. And celebrating God's goodness is found in several ways in Psalm 34. And beginning in verse number one of Psalm 34, David gives us several things, eight different things that we can do to celebrate God's goodness. Number one, bless the Lord at all times. Verse number one says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. Bless means to praise. And so as believers, we have all to praise the Lord for. And so we are to constantly be praising God for His goodness. How many would say that God is good all the time? You, somebody once said a phrase, you could, you could read it forward and backward, God is good all the time, all the time God is good. doesn't matter how you write it, it's, it's the same either way. It means the same thing either way. And so we are to always be blessing the Lord. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And... Uh, Definitely, there are, are m multiple times that God is good to us and gets us out of things and helps us with things and we should rejoice and celebrate God's goodness. Secondly, verse 2, he says, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. What does it mean to boast in the Lord? It means to glory in Him. Paul and Silas, when they were thrown in jail, 
the Bible says, began to sing hymns. And as they sang and they rejoiced, God was pleased. All the prison doors opened up. And the Philippian jailer was about to kill himself. And he says, don't hurt yourself. We're all here. None of us are leaving. <laughs> and they blessed the Lord. And the, the prisoners, all the prisoners in that prison heard them singing those praises, boasting in the Lord, praising the Lord, and glorying, giving Him glory. As believers, that's a, an important thing for us to do, glorifying the Lord for what He has done, and especially for His goodness. David, if he would have gone back, would have been captured by Saul. Had he stayed there in Gath, they knew who he was. His cover was blown, his identity was found, and so he was in a jam. And obviously the Lord put it in, the, put it in his head to act like a crazy man and to scrabble on the door and let the, his spit run down his beard. I, I don't know, I just have a wild imagination. I just think it's hilarious to see. Uh, that to me would have been hysterical. And the response of Achish was, he sold it. Achish really believed this man was crazy. And he says, get him out of here. Which, uh, who was it, who, which of you brought him in here into my presence? And, and took up my time to deal with this madman in my presence. It worked. And God allowed it to work. And so he praised the Lord for his goodness because God spared his life and David couldn't thank God enough. But in boasting in the Lord and glorifying the Lord for what he had done, there was influence. Look what it says in the next phrase. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. The humble relates to the poor, to the less fortunate. Other people need to see that God is a God who can deliver. That God is a God who is good. And when we are glorifying the Lord and praising the Lord, we have an opportunity to influence others around us to really see the hand of God in our lives understanding that God can do the same thing in theirs. And so celebrating God's goodness, first, is blessing the Lord at all times, praising Him continually. Good times and bad times, difficult times and easy times, dangerous times and safe times, and then boasting in the Lord. Then he uses another expression in verse 3. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Or to, together. The word magnify means to ascribe greatness to him and to exalt him. And so as believers, we should praise the Lord and we should express from our heart that we know who he is and understand how high he is, how mighty He is, how, how, how wonderful He is. And as believers express that. God, I can't thank you enough. You, you, you amaze me. You're too good to me. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for sparing my life. How many have ever had your life spared? How many, how many could have died and God, God intervened in some way, somehow? And you, and you have no idea how you made it out, but God delivered you. There you go. Okay? So we should magnify the Lord. He says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. That's what we do as believers in the house of God. That's the privilege we have every, every time we come into a service is we have that privilege to be able to exalt the Lord, to magnify the Lord, and to express how much we appreciate His goodness in our own individual life. But it doesn't end there. <clears throat> in verse number 4, 
He says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. <clears throat> David was in a spot, and here is a man who walked with God, a man who was a man after God's own heart, but he was afraid. God gave him a, a, an ability to overcome his fear with Goliath, but he's being chased by Saul, and, he th and, and now, unless God does something, he could be killed by Achish in a foreign land. But God delivers him. And so he seeks the Lord, which means he's asking for answers. The Bible says, ask, seek, and knock. Asking ye shall receive, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be open unto you. And David sought the Lord, he, he asked God for wisdom, asked God for guidance, and God came through. And God put it in his mind and in his heart to do what he did. The Bible says when we seek him, he will hear and guide and deliver us. In verse number four, it says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me. How many are glad that God hears you when you pray? Okay. Verse four, he says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. And David walked out of Gath. Whew. You ever felt that way? All the pressure's gone. All the fear is gone. What a feeling that is. That's what God can do. And when, we, when he does it, we need not forget the importance of celebrating those events in our life. And so David, is he writes this under the inspiration of the Spirit of God, writes this beautiful psalm in, in magnification of the Lord and exalting the Lord and, and expressing that he sought the Lord. So he's saying, I sought the Lord. What that does is that gives us hope that when we seek the Lord, that he can do the same thing that David. We can get answers just like David. We can get direction just like David. Uh, he may not ask you to act crazy, although some of you are pretty good at it, okay? Uh, he may, he, it, what, it, it, I mean, it, all the different kinds of things, the jams, the, the difficulties, the dangerous positions, the places that we find ourselves are all unique and all different because we're all different. But it doesn't matter what the situation is. It doesn't matter how tenuous and how, how dangerous and how difficult the situation is. God always can come through. He's good. And David was thanking God for how good he had been to him. So he says, <clears throat> I sought the Lord, and God gave me just what to do, and he delivered me from the hand of my enemy. Number five, he says in verse five, they looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. We need to look unto the Lord. Now, it's the expression and word lightened means brightened, and it relates to being cheerful. So what God did is he, he didn't know what to do. God helped him to know what to do. And his heart was brightened, and he was cheerful. Don't you think that he probably laughed when he got out of the difficulty? Wouldn't that be something you'd laugh about? Absolutely. I, mean, that's, to me, I don't know about you. I mean, don't you have a wild imagination? I mean, don't, can't you see how crazy that, that situation is? And they were, he, he was thrilled because God helped him to get out of danger. I sought the Lord and he heard me. And then he said, they, they looked unto him and were lightened. Their faces 
we're not ashamed. God is good and God delivers us from shame. We, we need to look to God first. Nobody else could help him. But the Lord did. And so look to the Lord when you need help. But then don't forget to thank him for his goodness. Celebrate again those moments in your life. Number six. Verse six. He says, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Now how many of you have never been in trouble? Never, never been in a tight spot? Never been in a jam? Never had difficulty? We all have trouble. <laughs> the Bible talks about how we, we you know, as, as, as God's people, as believers, we're, we, we have trouble pretty much almost every day. But we have a God who we can bring those troubles to, who listens to us and helps us. This poor man cried. That means he prayed. And so when you don't know what to do and you need help, you need to cry out to God. And David cried out to God. This was not just the normal situation. This was a life, now listen to me, this was a life and death situation. And God delivered him because he cried out. It's interesting how he refers to himself, this poor man. What he was saying is not worthy inadequate couldn't help myself but I cried out and verse 6 says this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles do you need to be saved out of some trouble tonight or have you been saved out of some trouble in your past Maybe it was this past week. Maybe it was a couple weeks ago. Maybe it was a month ago. Maybe it was a year ago. When's the last time you celebrated God's deliverance? When's the last time you thanked Him for His goodness? How quickly we forget. That's why <clears throat> when we sing the song... how I proved him or and or. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to trust him more. We learn to prove him every day. And we can go back and remember these days and know that God can do it again and again and again. And then the next time we're more apt to cry than to seek help elsewhere. It's very easy to hit somebody else up or try to figure everything out yourself. But God always has the right answer. And we, He should be our first resort. Then in verse 7 and verse 9, He gives us something else to do in celebrating God's goodness. Not only do we cry unto the Lord, but we fear the Lord. In verse 7, he says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. <clears throat> the last several weeks and Wednesday night, we have spoken about angels last week. The last week we dealt with Satan. We'll deal with Satan again this week. The wonderful thing is, is there's a lot we don't see behind the scenes that God does. And that's why we need to fear him. 
Fearing Him is a reverence. Fearing Him goes beyond trust and faith. Fearing Him under, make, make, helps you to understand that as God, He has a power and an ability and a, a distance, be, even though we, we can know Him and we're close to Him, there is definitely a, a, a difference in who He is and who we are. And we recognize and reverence Him for the fact that he is God and that we're human. And as God, fear him and respect him and love him and understand that when we fear him that he is doing things behind the scenes that we don't know that he's doing and recognizing that helps us to rejoice in his goodness. David believed in the supernatural. He understood the angels. He understood how God was able to get him out of this, this, this situation. And we need to recognize that we have a God that has that ability and that power. Verse 9 says, there is no want to them that fear him. It means he takes care of us. That is something to celebrate. Note the next verse, verse 10. He talks about how God takes care of us. He says, The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come ye children, hearken unto me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. And so David learned to fear God and to give him his proper place. And God was able, God came through and gave him the answer to be delivered from that situation, celebrating God's goodness. Now, before I go to the, la the last point, <clears throat> Let me ask you, what has God delivered you from? Just give a real quick snippet of something that God has done for you that you can never thank Him enough for. Dad? Dad? I just pulled it out of our apartment. Mm-hmm. Uh, <coughs> mm-hmm. Thank you. Carl? Um, last year, we get out of debt after drinks and medicals. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Someone else? Gloria? I grew up in the city of 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 the city Wade. Especially with a loaded tanker full of gas or diesel. So, yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Someone else. How God's delivered you. Susan. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Someone else. How God's delivered you. Pamela. Wow. Okay.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I had a similar experience in college. Uh, I was driving, uh, any, any of you remember uh, the Dodge Omnis? Ever, ever seen those cars? Um, so we had put snow tires on the front and I found out afterwards you're not supposed to do that because it was front wheel drive. And I was driving home from work. I was in Bible College, Linda and I were, were married and had, had, did you have Bruce? So we had two little ones. Uh, it was my, was it my sophomore or, or my senior year or junior, my, it was, so it was my last year of college. And it was snow. It was in the Chicago area and so there was snow everywhere. There was, there were no lines. Couldn't see anything. It wasn't, wasn't plowed really well. My car went over the edge of the roadway and there was about a six inch, or a six to ten inch drop. I'm not exactly sure how, how far. So when I brought the car back onto the freeway, I began to slide and I was going forward. And I was back and forth into oncoming traffic and this car, I was going 40, 45, not going over the speed limit. But I was having trouble directing the car. And this car was in the oncoming, it was a two lane road, it was coming at me. In the last minute, God turned the car backwards and that car hit the passenger seat. When I stopped, and it was pretty abruptly, I had no scratch, had no injury, and the right crossbar between the door, the two windows, was touching my shoulder. And when, I think when Linda saw it, it she started to cry. Um, it, it, if, if it would have hit me, it would have killed me instantly. And so God delivered, and I've, I've never forgotten that. God was very, very good to me. Someone else. And there are times that we don't even know that he has. And so we can be thankful. And so the last thing that David writes is in verse number 8. He says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? Good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. So the last thing he says is trust the Lord. David had learned to trust the Lord with his life. And by the way, folks, there's nobody that you could trust that can help you more and can do more and can protect you more than the Lord. My favorite verses are Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Solomon writes this. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. If David would have leaned on his own understanding, he'd be dead. He would never have written Psalm 34 and beyond. But he recognized that he needed to trust the Lord and he did not know what to do. He had no, did, did not know where to turn. And he, he trusted the Lord and God gave him the answer. And the Bible says, Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Let's learn to celebrate his goodness. Uh, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So tonight, as we end the service, what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to think of something that you can thank him for. His goodness. Just snippets of little, just 
not a message, not a story, just something simple, just directly to the point, what God has done, expressing God's goodness. Carl? Cheaper rent. Cheaper rent. That's, a good, that's, that's, that's good. Amen? <laughs> somebody, else, somebody else. Salvation. Praise the Lord. Healing. Praise the Lord. So, provision. Forgiveness. Alan. For, for, he's forgiven us, yes. Uh huh. Church. Okay. Praise the Lord. Someone, something else, Dan? Godly family. What are you thankful for? What, how, how, what, what has God been good to you with? Blanca. Salvation. Pamela. Yes. Yes. He can, u he, uses, he can use anything to teach us. Yes. Somebody else? Provides for us. Gives us everything we need. Amen. Christian friends. Abishak. Safety and provision. Nathan. Grace. Amen. Someone else? Answers to prayer. The Word of God, the Bible, yes. Something else. His goodness to us. Alan. Thank you that you're saved. Praise the Lord. I'm glad you're saved too. So that's a blessing. Abby. Opportunities that allow us, allow us to grow. Amen. Amen. What is, how has God been good to you? Getting to know him, the peace that comes with it. Okay? That's good. Blanca. Living in a free country. You know, we, we, I mean, that in itself, what we have here as Americans, ha m most of the world will never know. And we can just be thankful. We take so much for granted being here in America. Pamela. Amen. This this poor man cried and delivered us from all of our troubles. Susan. Song in your heart. Praise the Lord. A couple more minutes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. God's been good to you this year with your sons. Amen. For hope. Amen. Yes. We celebrated a one-year-old birthday uh, this last night. And uh, she was going to be born at home. Her mother had a uh, C-section the day before. About 10 days before the birth of Riley, Meredith's friend also had a C-section and was having For God's deliverance of your of your grand grandchild. Amen. Anyone else before? Shyly. Amen. That's a that's a big that's a big deal. Praise the Lord. I uh, remember talking through talking you through those battles, those difficulties. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. Someone else? God's good. Let's say it together. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Our Father, thank you for tonight. We thank you for the word. And we thank you that you delivered David. It's a remarkable story, but not just a story. 
It's real life. And oh, it meant so much to David to know how good that you had been to him. And it means so much to us to know how good you are to us personally. We ask that you would help us to celebrate your goodness in our lives every day. That there would not be a day goes by that we don't praise you. That we would remember this wonderful psalm of David and we would refer to it over and over thinking of how much you do and who you are and what a blessing we have to have you as our God. Let's stand, our heads about, our eyes are closed.